The RTX 5080 and 5090 officially landed with retailers and in a surprise to, well, nobody, sold out basically immediately. But the more worrying thing was that they sold out for frankly extortionate prices with the biggest price premium I've ever seen for buying a next gen GPU at launch. So why on earth has this happened? When are these cards going to come back in stock? And when they do, should you actually buy them? Or is this just a generation of GPUs? you shouldn't buy. Let's talk about it. I felt compelled to film this video after seeing the frankly horrendous pricing of these GPUs at retailers in both the UK and in the US yesterday. Whenever a new card launches, it always tends to sell out. Why? Because there's not enough supply to cope with the demand. And even if a particular SKU receives slightly negative reviews, there are always going to be people who are desperately waiting to upgrade or just haven't seen the nuance in some of the benchmark and analysis content here on YouTube and on popular websites. But the level we saw yesterday was frankly unprecedented, and either seems to back up a recent video cards article, which worryingly suggested that it was basically impossible for AIBs like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte and others to hit NVIDIA's designated MSRP, or seems to suggest that the AICs, the retailers, or both were just being plain greedy. Now NVIDIA would argue that they are trying to push board partners towards the MSRP, and you have to remember that's why the Founders Edition card exists in the first place. Back during the GPU shortages of 2020 and 2021, the FE card was launched as a way to prove that the MSRP was achievable. The problem is, is we don't know how much AMD or Nvidia charge MSI, Gigabyte or others for the raw GPU chips inside each of these cards. The other big problem with the RTX 50 series from a pricing point of view is memory. Now while the 5080 might not be stacked with the 32 gigabytes that you'll find on the RTX 5090, the memory across the board on this generation is the newer, much faster GDDR7. These memory chips that board partners buy from the likes of Samsung are naturally going to cost a good chunk more than GDDR6, again pushing up the price. But I don't want to make excuses for the pricing of these GPUs, and I actually think it's important to point to the state of the GPU market in general. The 5080's closest competitor from AMD would be the 7900XTX, and while on all accounts in our benchmarks it's an inferior GPU, it's theoretically one that presents itself as a good value alternative. That's a card that back in October last year, so what's that like six weeks ago? you could buy from Newegg for around $829. That same exact cooling design of the 7900XTX now clocks in at close to $1,200. That's $200 more than the MSRP of the RTX 5080 for a GPU that provides less performance and has been around for basically the best part of two years. And while I'm not trying to blame AMD for Nvidia's highly inflated pricing right now, they do play a part too. And the lack of competition Competition in the market is, wow, really evident. Now, if you had $1,000 to spend before the 50 series launch, I would have told you to buy a 4080 Super. For most people, that was the best card on balance. The 5080 only makes the Nvidia recommendation even stronger at the $999 MSRP that as media, we have to base some of our pre-embargo testing on. Remember, at that point, we don't know what retailers and board partners are going to charge for their cards. In fact, before launching my MSI Vanguard 5080 build yesterday, today, MSI just wouldn't tell me what the MSRP of that cooling design was and said that it was instead basically up to retailers to determine what they were going to charge for MSI's new GPU. AMD's upcoming 9070 and 97XT may change the landscape and may put pressure price-wise on Nvidia and their board partners to be more competitive. But that doesn't answer the question that I posed at the start of the video, what's going to happen with these Nvidia cards? Now hopefully the launch of Nvidia's 5070 Ti and 5070 next month will help to spread out a little bit of the next generation GPU demand. But the concern is that if these prices have been unachievable on the 5080 and 5090 with regards to their MSRP, we may see a similar story with Nvidia's two upcoming cheaper cards too. The honest answer? Wait. That isn't advice anyone who's on the cusp of finishing their new gaming PC build wants to hear. But the timing of the 50 series launch from a supply and manufacturing point of view is far from ideal. We're currently in the midst of Chinese New Year. That's one of the biggest holiday celebrations in China for the whole year. With factory workers understandably downing tools and taking some time off, which is undoubtedly going to affect the supply of GPUs. Now this is even more important when you take into account the fact that the GPU chips themselves are made by 
TSMC in Taiwan, and lots of the cards and boards are built and assembled and shipped from China. Nvidia haven't actually launched a fresh architecture at this time of year for as long as I can remember. The 40 series, 30 series, and 20 series all launched in September, with the 10 series launching in May. Now, yes, the 40 series super refresh was launched in January this time last year, but that was only a spread of three GPUs, and complemented an already competitive and readily available lineup to help keep prices under control. Plain and simple, the start of January is not a great time to basically replace your entire lineup, and what the January timing did as well was cause retailers to be hyper competitive when it came to Black Friday and shifting all their GPUs, with anything left scooped up by those of you looking to build a PC at Christmas or spend a bit of that Christmas cash. It is this lack of supply within the market and already inflated prices that saw 4080 Supers selling just a couple of weeks ago for above MSRP and 4090 selling secondhand on eBay for $2,000 that has only inflated this situation more. And the lack of supply into retailers has caused either the board partners, the retailers, or both to just go, yeah, you know what? We're just gonna charge a fortune for these things. And in many ways, that is something I find a little bit disappointing. I think the perfect sum of events has combined to basically screw consumers. And that's something I'm just not happy about. It's also difficult for those of us who review GPUs. Now, I don't necessarily class this as a technical review channel. And there are loads of other, frankly, better resources to go for that information. My job is to just tell you guys what the best builds are for different price points. And when a new graphics card does land, let you know whether or not I think it's any good. But that is all based on the price of the GPU. And Paul's Hardware made a fantastic point in his recent video where he said that, broadly speaking, there's no such thing as a bad GPU, just a badly priced one. Now, while I think there may be a couple of exceptions in there, including the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti, boom, I do broadly agree. And many of us as tech content creators were evaluating the RTX 5090 and 5080 based on the MSRP information that we received from Nvidia and from the board partners who were willing to share it. That is the only information that we have when compiling our videos before the launch to actually base our analysis and recommendations off. And unfortunately, this time around with the RTX 50 series, it's eroded my trust in this figure. A figure which is typically maybe slightly lower than the reality at retailers and system integrators, but is normally a very reliable guide from which we can base our testing. This time around, it seems maybe the MSRP just wasn't as achievable as we were all led to believe. Hold it out, the supply will come and prices will drop. But for now, I can only agree that we're in a slightly situation.